I am going to go through a presentation I made for ChatGPT just to give you a little bit of an overview. Um, it's exploded onto the scene and there's a ton of articles that are linked to this slide deck. I'm gonna go relatively quickly through this slide deck, but I will share it with you. So you can go back and through it if you want and look at some of these articles. Uh, we're in the middle of a major technological shift. It's akin to the rollout of the internet in the mid nineties. It's changed everything. So generative AI and chat GPT and some of the other generative AI platforms are exploding onto the scene and we really need to get on board and get ahead of the curve. Chat GPT had over a hundred million users in January alone, and it rolled out, I think in December. So it's really one of the fastest growing consumer apps in history. It is a artificial intelligence program. Really, it just generates writing. It stands for generative pre-trained transformer, which really doesn't matter, but it's a large language model system to simulate human communication. And what that means is it is a, it uses statistics essentially to mimic human communication. It's in beta. It's free at the moment. There is a $20 a month chat GPT plus version where you get priority access, faster response time, new features. You could ask follow-up questions on ChatBT, and you could challenge and correct premises, and you could reject words. It does a lot for you. But it is important to know that this is not some sci-fi AI that is self-aware. It does not know what it is saying. It does know what words are likely to come after one another based on a data set it is trained upon. So think of it as like a parrot. It repeats words that are likely to be found together based on natural speech. It's, it's really a probability model. However, the data set it's trained on is essentially the internet. So it has a massive amount of data and that's why it's so good. You know, basically give it inputs, for example, explain quantum computing in simple terms, or I gotta do some coding. It remembers what user said before in earlier conversations. You could provide follow-up corrections and questions and it is trained to decline inappropriate requests. So just an example of inputs. You can use all kinds of prompts. The best way to, to, to learn it is really kind of play around with it, but you can use it to you know, generate ideas, solve problems. Uh, it will craft content, great at, at creating outlines and summarizing texts. So you can, you could cut and paste large portions of text in and ask it to do stuff for you. Like here's an article, summarize this for me. Myself, I've used it. I've written stuff and then I will paste it into chat GBT and I just say, rewrite this to make it a little clearer and it will go through and just clean up my writing for me, which is kind of nice. I gotta be honest. And it will organize data as well. Here's an example. I just asked it to explain the Arab Israeli conflict and it spit out this nice summary. Uh, again, it doesn't necessarily know it's correct. It just looked at the, uh, Arab Israeli conflict information. It kind of synthesized it into a coherent uh, paragraph and spit it out again. But this happened kind of in real time. It took, it took less than a, a couple, 10, 10 seconds to come up with this. So there are some limitations. It will sometimes write very plausible sounding, but incorrect answer. So it, it, it's a great liar. It has a tendency to be a little verbose uh, and it's not connected to the internet. So it has content knowledge up to about 2021. But if you ask it for anything modern, for example, the, the snowpack, the, the and, and flooding in California from the snowpack melt, it has no idea what you're talking about. So it's not great for current events. It can hold a discussion and offer information, but it can't provide tailored feedback or it's not real time dialogue. So it might seem like it is, but it's, it's not. Essentially it lies with complete confidence. It's a great liar. So it could be, you could answer a question completely nonsensical. And then if you don't know what you're talking about, you could trust what it has to say. And that's kind of a, a key thing for our students to realize if they end up using this and it's a, it, there's some great lesson plans in terms of looking at what chat GPT comes out with and then going in as a student and, and fact checking it. So when this came out, of course, immediately there was an alarmist reaction. I think that's kind of a knee jerk reaction. A lot of us have to change. Um, and it's, uh, you know, the, we get these articles that like, you know, the college essay is dead. Um, 
and you can't give homework anymore. You know, even on, you know, it's just so good. And, and it really is, is good at answering things. But I, I think that's a, a little alarmist. This was a great article really showing where teachers are coming from in terms of our headspace. And it says, you know, it, in education, they went right to kids are going to use this to write essays and it's going to be plagiarism. We jumped right to this one very unique use case, which is kind of goes on our personal fears, but not necessarily the reality. There's a disconnect. Kid, kids are engaging with this in all sorts of realms, and it's not, they're engaging in AI. It's not just chat GPT. Discord is very popular with kids. Discord is a uh, kind of a chat service and it's an online forum. And it's difficult sometimes to keep up with the conversations because you might go to bed and there's another thousand people commented and there is a little AI bot that, that Discord has that'll summarize for you. So kids are using AI, and I think we have to be careful about just assuming that they're just going to plagiarize everything, and then that's it. It's, uh, so really, the, the the message for teachers is just keep calm. Do not panic. Please, okay? Just please don't panic, <laughs> okay? So it's good to keep in mind that Google was once seen as a threat to education because people could look up any fact instantly. Teachers, we adapted. Um, we didn't just make them memorize things anymore because they could find it on Google. So when, you know, all this is, is adaptation that takes a little bit of time. And, and if you're listening to this and you're a teacher, think back when, you know, the internet came out and then student devices, uh, were prevalent and initially we had to change some things around. So this is, this is a similar case. The, the reality is it's a little bit more nuanced. And if you want to come back, you could read this article, the couple other articles about, uh, like calm down. It's not the end of the world. And there's ways that we could craft assignments and we could look at how we're teaching writing that would really end up helping, helping our kids. It's really using chat GPT as a, as a teaching tool, especially for our struggling writers. Um, it has a lot of potential to help in the essay writing process. It's a wonderful idea generator. It could, it could give feedback on writing style. It could even provide templates. It helps with outlines. There's a lot of stuff it can do. Um, if you're a skilled teacher, you got to keep in mind that, you know, we, uh, we know our kids. So if, if, if you're a good teacher, you know, your kids and suddenly they turn in something that is way as an outlier to what they previously turned in. It's pretty obvious for us. And, that, and that's, especially as middle school students, I'm not overly concerned necessarily with kids massively plagiarizing everything. I think our kids really do want to do the right thing. Um, and if something comes across as like, like really, really out there for, for a particular kid, that's a red flag that maybe they play dry stuff. We could, we could look into that. There are attempts to look at the uh, output from these AI bots and, and watermarking the responses in terms of, a, we won't need to get into it, but using statistics to insert some language um, into some plagiarism detectors, but that is in the works. And I wouldn't necessarily rely on that. For us, it's really to keep in mind that this is a tool, it's simply a tool. Um, it's a, it's a distillation of human knowledge. It is a wonderful thing to, to utilize, but as teachers and students, we still have to utilize it. We've got to think through things and it's a critical thinking aspect. Um, it can be used as a wonderful teaching tool, especially for, uh, structuring essays and writing essays and providing feedback. This stuff's out there already, you know, for, for musicians and for other things. We've been using grammar checkers for a long time. That's AI, just a different way of doing it. And, and Grammarly is a good example where you put it down there and it suggests different word choices and tenses and different aspects of our writing. So this is just a more sophisticated version of that. So the question really for us is, it's, it's, you know, it's not, do you know the answer? It's, it's how can you get the correct answer? We're talking about teaching the application of knowledge versus the recitation of knowledge and that doing that in the context of writing. So how do you do the writing? How do you get the right answer? It's not just spitting out the final product. So it's really not about the product anymore. Again, I know math teachers hate this, but if this is a, a, a good kind of equivalency of calculators. I remember when I was younger, back in the, in the dark ages, and calculators were not allowed in my math class and uh, because it was really all about the answer. And I think math has changed quite a bit over the last 15, 20 years. And that's why all the adults are getting angry at the new math, because a lot of that is teaching the 
the, the process and the thinking process about why the answers are the way they are. You know, so it's, it's again, it's, it's the application of math and application of knowledge, not just to calculate anymore. And, and this, what we're talking about with chat GPT is same idea, but now for writing. So they want to use chat GPT to approve. You can use it to improve your ability to write, not just, um, replace people, replace the essay. Okay. So, um, in order to do that. You need to understand like, you know, how do we use this effectively? Google's a great example. The kid, we've all seen our students that will search for Google and they, and they get, they, they do it. They just type the word in and they, and they're done. They have no idea how to use Google correctly, how to find the right information. Chat GP is the same way. We need to understand, you know, how we use this. And uh, again, it's a skill. It's, it's not a crutch for us. So. I like this uh, example here that, you know, chat GP lessons are the recipe. The teachers are still a chef and you could read this as another good article. If you come back about, um, what you could do with chat GPT. Now there are some examples that people are embracing this. This is a college professor who in their policy, they expect people to use AI and he, and he talks like, yes, you're going to use this and there's limitations and there's different prompts. It says, don't trust it. You need to make sure you go fact check, but they're, they're, you know, incorporating and embracing this. Um, many students, you know, admit in ways that, you know, it could help them out. Um, this example, you could have to go back and look at it because it's small, but this was a, um, chat GPT outlined an essay on how to use chat GPT. And it's, uh, for kids, especially struggling readers, if they have, for example, a thesis statement that they've come up with, you could plug that into chat GPT and say, generate a outline for an essay with this thesis statement, and it'll come across. And it's just taking that thesis statement of breaking up into its different components and, and kind of here. And then the kids would look at that outline and then turn around and get to write the paper. So it just helps. It could be used simply as that as a way to organize themselves. There's a bunch of ideas that this is a, if you follow this link here, it talks about ideas for kids. You could pick a controversial topic, have it write a short essay, and then the kids go in and fast fact check it or you know, write a counter argument to that. They could give it a complex command and have students fill in the blanks. Um, you know, analyze this for his examples, analyze the way in which the United States sought to exert influence around abroad using the cold war. And it was a well-written paragraph, but then that six kind of points, but it didn't include any evidence. So teachers, uh, you know, students can go back in there and then go find citations to support what chat GP was saying this, you could uh, evaluate responses and provide a proof of their views. So this was, a, uh, how would you solve the massive challenge of natural resource depletion in the world's population? ChatGPT came up with this and students can go in and evaluate those answers. Now for teachers, you should use this. ChatGPT is amazing for a time saver. You should, you should be using this to save yourself some time. You could, uh, ChatGPT could generate ex uh, exercise worksheets, can come up with quiz questions. You can, um, use, uh, lecture notes and then have it come up with a fill in the blank kind of uh, situation for your kids. So you could, you could use this to help you out. They did a survey last month, I believe in April of 2023. They had a thousand teachers were surveyed and uh, these were, I believe, K-12 teachers. 95% of them were aware of ChatGPT. 98% had used it. Uh, if you look here at the chart, it's either frequently or, or at least sometimes. 79% uh, um, were uh, approved that the kids of using it. And 84% said they approve of use if uh, you spend some time teaching the kids about it. And 35% uh, believe some of their kids have turned in assignments using it. And here's the kicker, 71% says their school doesn't have any type of policy. That's something we need to talk about. Uh, listen, it's great to write emails, it's, it's, which takes time to craft emails. It could do write an email to remind families. And, and then you just fill in the blanks. You could have, uh, I need feedback ideas for kids. And it'll give you some different comments that you could utilize. It's always very helpful, especially if you're trying to differentiate some, some feedback. You can uh, break down a process. It'll ask you to, hey, write a step-by-step -step guide to do whatever, and it'll break that down. You can take that and refine that process for kids. You can simplify an explanation. You can, you know, make a list of 10 writing prompts. I could share with students to have them write about endangered species. So you could revise emails. We'll do all this stuff for you. Even, even online tools are using ChatGPT. Parlay is an online discussion tool, and they have now included ChatGPT in their software. In, which is which you'll, you're going to end up seeing more and more. And I believe Grammarly just got picked up by uh, a big upgrade. So ChatGPT4 is out. 
came out uh, a couple months ago, and which means that you know they they came out with like ChatGPT three in December, and they're already up to four, and you could see that people immediately freaked out. They had uh, the the ChatGPT three point five versus four. Four did much better on you know the GRE writing and the EP uh, biology test that kind of stuff. So it's pretty sophisticated. But here's the bottom line: teachers, you don't need to be threatened by ChatGPT. It's a secret weapon. You know we have creativity, so it's very convincing. And it fills in gaps of an essay really well, but it's not, it doesn't evoke emotion, it doesn't evoke insight, it doesn't evoke intrigue. Humans, kids, teachers still have thought, and text generators are never going to replace that, ever. So for us, it's it's how to use chat BT. It's all about the prompts and, and prompt writing and teaching kids how to write specific prompts is going to be the art form so they get what they're supposed to get out of it. And that, you know, talking about using it the source, paying attention to your verbs, telling ChatGPT what you want. So you can go back and, and look at these slides, especially for the prompt writing, because that's where I think we could really help our kids. Now there's AI stuff everywhere. So just there's, you know, there's AI uh, image generation, text to image generation. There is uh, just generate content. Uh, there's data analysis, convert text to speech. Jasper is a, a tool to write essays. So AI is not going anywhere, okay? It's just getting, there's investing a lot of money into it. So it's a matter of of using it and picking the stuff that works for us as a school and our, and our kids. Perplexity, there's u.com and, and then PDF. It will just summarize a PDF for you. Now, um, just on a quick aside, just to show you what we're talking about with some of the generated images. It's been around for a little while, but this is Dolly. So this was an anamorphic, anamorphic basset hound wearing a tuxedo, eating a salami sandwich. Boom, that's what it came up with. It's a completely uh, AI generated image. Um, Adobe Firefly just came out. Um, I just got on this in uh, April and it came up with this based on, on that prompt. Uh, these are uh, another AI generated where there's a work male middle school teacher from the seventies or Hermione Granger, like Van Gogh. And this one as well, this is completely fictional place. It's a lake in a secluded valley. So AI is around. Now, ChatGPT is very popular and there's a lot of articles. So this might seem a little overwhelming, but you could peruse these. I got I got basically three slides of articles to uh, help you out. So again, this is just a just a, a quick overview of ChatGPT. I know it's kind of a long video, but take your time, embrace it, and let's talk as a school.